data store object we call it's a DSO in SAP BW. In SAP BW, we have a data targets and these objects physically stores the data. And you can create the queries from your data targets. And queries can also be created on most data targets. So a data target can be an info provider. But it doesn't mean that all info providers are data targets. DSO are a data target, but not necessarily info providers. So that central data target in SAP BW is an info cube, which normally stores data at the aggregated level and is used for creating queries. In any SAP BW design, it's a good practice to have DSO as a staging layer that stores the transaction level data and stores the data received from multiple sources before relying on into info cubes or other data targets. And basically DSO has two types of fields. One is key field, another one data fields. While the key fields uniquely identify a record in a DSO, all other fields are the data fields which can combine like uh, characteristics and key figure info objects. And data store, it will store the data at detail level and tracks the changes to a data and stores the master data as well. So one of the major benefits of a DSO are their overwrite capability, unlike info cubes. And DSO are transparent tables and can override the stored data for a defined key and the functionality of DSO a replication of the business critical data from transactional source system into the data warehouse and flexibility within the data warehousing solutions to redesign other data targets such as info cubes that receive data from DSOs and it has a mechanism to identify changes in the original record for data sources that send the entire data sets every time a change is made. This feature helps in transmitting only relevant records or changes in the record to a data target. And data staging layer within the data warehouse where the data validation, cleansing and synchronizations can be done. And if you take the data flow about your data store objects, if you load from any source, the data will be loading from any source. So we are using here DSO as a staging layer. So the data will be reaching to the DSO first at a detail level. And if you have any target on top of your DSO, then it will send the data to your target. Or in case if you don't have any target data targets on top of your DSO, you can create the queries on your DSO. So here your DSO will become a data target. But in this case, we have a data target on top of DSO that is InfoCube. So InfoCube obviously it will store the data at aggregated level. And in case if you required any data in detail level for the queries, you can always jump from your InfoCube to your DSO. And if you talk about the types of DSOs, we have a standard DSO, write optimized DSO, direct update DSO. And the standard DSO, it is used most often in the data staging layer and allows the overwriting of data fields as well as the adding of key figure values. And data from standard DSO can be loaded to another DSO or to an info queue as a data targets. And it has the three tables, active data table, change log data table, and activation queue table. And write optimized DSO. It can load data more quickly than the standard DSO because it is not necessarily to process the activation of newly loaded request. 
and it consists only one table that is active data table. The data in this type of DSO can be loaded using the standard data staging process. And direct update DSO, the data in this type of DSO cannot be loaded using the standard data staging process. It uses the API programming functionality and this DSO is used as a data target in the APD process and just like over a write optimized DSO it also consists only one active data table and when you compare these three different types of DSOs and activation is required only for standard DSO and active data table contains the three of these DSOs every DSO contain the active data table but only standard DSO contains the activation queue table and change log table. Only standard DSO contains these two tables and reporting is possible for all of these three DSOs and SID generation can be done only in standard DSO. So when you load the data from the DTP or from your source system to your DSO and initially it will reach to the activation queue table that is your new data table and as we discussed this activation queue table is only relevant for the standard DSO when the data is loaded into the standard DSO it first stored in this table the key fields of these tables are technical and consist of request ID that is your surrogate ID and the package ID it is a data package number and the record number. So once the data has reached to the activation queue table, you have to activate your DSO. Once you've done the activation, what happens is it will send the data to active data table and change log table simultaneously. So the activation active data table, the data from the active data table is generally used for reporting okay so here there is a key field chosen while designing a DSO is a key of this defined this key also known as a semantic key of DSO the activation process moves the data from activation queue table onto the active data table and the change log table so once you come back to the change log table all of the changes to existing records are recorded in the change log table. So again it will create the request ID, package ID and record number and these set of keys is not similar to the, these set of keys. These are the different one. This, this, this set of keys belongs to the change log table. So this, this image will explain to you that initially it will, the data will be reached in your DSO to the activation queue table where it will have contains the detailed information once you done the activation of DSO it will send the data to active data table and the change log table but the reporting can be done from only active data table data and it a reporting cannot be done on change log table so we we heard about this like a DSO has the functionality of overwriting right so let's see how this overwriting can be done here for example I have a data request 1 and sending the data to your DSO first initially it will reach to your new data table okay then once you've done the activation it will send the data to active data table and the change log table and new data table will become empty so once if you get one more request the latest latest data that is your request number 2 it contains the latest information for example at my presently in my active data table the amount value is 30 but my, my new request the amount value is 40 which is the latest information so what happens is once I activate the DSO again this value will be overwritten with the previous value in active data table let's check it out so I have done the activating my DSO now again it sent the data to active data table and the change log table 
and if you go to the act to data table you can observe here the amount has been overwritten with the latest information now it displays only 40 come back to the change log table you can observe here it is keep tracking all the changes to the records the first record contains the 30 the value then it is updated with the 40 so the 30 amount value become a minus here now the latest information is displaying only the 40 so this is how the overwriting functional functionality can be done in your dso and we have a zero record mode info object when standard dso is activated sap bw adds the zero record mode info object to the dso this is in addition to the key fields and data fields and and this this will be added to all the three tables of your standard dso this info object is used internally by the SAP BW. We are not creating this info object. The BW system will create by default when you've done the activation. So for example, if you are fetching the data from SAP R by 3 system through a data source, so we have to activate the data source in your SAP BW content. For every data source, it has a standard business process. The data source field RO cancel it will automatically available for every data source in a SAP business content for example this field can be mapped with the zero record info object in SAP BW so I have a zero record info object in SAP BW so what is a field I can map with the, if I am getting the data from SAP R by 3 system the field is RO cancel so this field can be mapped with your zero record mode. So the data will be matching with your R by three system with your BW system.